Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we begin to take the time and look at the market that was, we can see that this past week the market ended unchanged. But that really doesn't tell us the whole story, does it? Yes, the market ended unchanged, but that was after a quite large sell-off on Thursday and Friday, continuation on Friday on the jobs number. Keep in mind that we also had some key uh, price level action going on there. We reached the 50 uh, moving average, exponential moving average on the daily chart and kind of fell off of there. That's the old ice hole failure from Dave Illich's uh, teachings. But again, the market did start off pretty well off of some of the improved sentiment about Greece in their baking industry, so the market started the week off pretty well. But again, uh, and off of uh, you know hopes of quantitative easing, uh, there wasn't any uh, much corporate news going on this week. But as the minutes from the Fed were released and really made no mention of uh, a new round of quantitative easing, the market began to sell off again at that 50 million average and continued on Friday because the um, August employment situation was a big disappointment. Appointment. I also want to point out consumer confidence for August came in at 44.5, which was the lowest since April of 2009. So our economic data continues to be weak, and the market was still hoping to get some some talk of more quantitative easing, and they didn't get it. As we go into next week, we can really see that there's nothing going on as far as earnings, and our economic calendar is light as also. So this will be a week when it's light on data or scheduled releases that we may had to watch for unscheduled comments from the Fed, uh, from uh, you know uh, uh, the Treasury that could move the market one way or the other. Let's pull up the charts and take a look. We are starting off with our daily chart of the S&P 500, and now we can get a better visual of what we're talking about. That the market ran up here to the 50 moving average and failed, and the the train of thought, if you follow Dave Elliott and his ice hole failure, is that when we come up and test a moving average like this and fail, that we typically make new lows. So that's certainly not good if you're a bull and um, uh, want to see the market move higher. Now notice also that as we look at where the market fell uh, on Friday, but it kind of matches up with our wick here for the beginning of August, August 5th, and you know these days in here. So we hope that buyers will continue to find value here. We put in a new swing high, swing low, and we can't go back and test the 50 moving average again. Uh, for the bears, they certainly want to see if this will make a new low. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if, if we come all the way back down here to 1120. Our indicators are pretty much all weak. Uh, Stochastics rolling over, RSI are rolling over. MACD was weak to begin with. When we zoom out to a longer time frame and look at this on the weekly, we can start to see an inverted hammer being placed in here. The inverted hammer right here. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see, will the 200 here hold up on the weekly? Um, and it, again, our 1120 support. All of our indicators are weak. Weekly are all bearish. And finally, one more time out to the monthly. And since we only even had uh, two trade days in September, certainly we can see that we have a nice red month. But look at the one, two, three, four. This will be the fifth month uh, of, of just pushing down. And once again, with that 1120, will the 200 moving average also be our final line in defense on the monthly chart as we may push lower because our monthly charts certainly have more room to fall. 
switching over to the NASDAQ and going back to the daily zoom in and we can see the same thing we failed here at the 50 moving average dropping below the 20 in the uh, 10 moving average and so it's going to be interesting to see where we we kind of find some support here looks like the uh, 2340 range might be our, our potential uh, stop here you can make an argument that maybe we're putting in an inverted head and shoulders but that, I think that's a stretch uh, again our indicators stochastics rolling over RSI rolling over MACD never got up so weekly our daily is weak is what I'm trying to say going out to the weekly we can begin to see that there's our inverted hammer once again here's our up and down again that 2340 as an area that we have to watch and a 200 moving average all of our indicators are weak have more room to go lower and finally on the monthly chart we can again see our 1, 2, 3, 4 down we do have the 50 moving average here as our line in the sand that's where we stopped in August uh, and of course our 200 moving average way down here so if the Nasdaq starts selling off like the S&P uh, we have the 200 so we're gonna have to watch the 50 to 200 and our indicators are all just rolling over now and have plenty more room to go on the daily so again long term our market is weak short term we would love to see the market put in a higher low let's take a look of our, our market leaders to see what they're showing us okay as we begin to look at our market leaders we can see here Apple um, Apple kind of started selling off here on Wednesday, and we had a gap down on Friday. Hopefully, the 50 moving average will hold up. You know, also notice here on our, our market profile, we don't want to talk about volume profile, but you can see this point of control here at 390. A lot of volume accumulated here uh, over the past month or so. And so, you know, that's going to take a lot of volume for us to get up and get back into the 400 price level. So, uh, Apple seems to be consolidated, but more importantly, it's sideways. Maybe even sideways to down, but I'll say sideways. What about Amazon? Amazon kind of been all over the place. Uh, it, it was weaker, especially weaker than Apple uh, for a while there. But you can see it made a nice move here. And even with the move here on Friday, the gap down, like Apple, you can see at least some buyers have found value. Notice that it got down to a previous level of uh, interest, and that's where we tend to move. You can also see over here, it basically got down to the value area low uh, of the past couple days, and the, so the buyers found and moved it back up. Now, I'm not going to guarantee we're going to go test the point of control, uh, but you know, uh, I would definitely sideways for Amazon. Moving on to Google. Google certainly has fell off a little bit since uh, its earnings that sent it on it on its move. If we extend out here just to see how this lines up, and that's pretty interesting that our, our downtrend line seems to be working. Of course, the 50 moving average is like the move, just like the rest of the market. Um, it it also on Wednesday started to move down here. Notice our PPS indicator is basically saying short now on Friday's action. So. This is definitely, you could also say, a, a descending wedge. Um, I'll be nice to, on this one, say sideways, but I would probably say sideways to down. Goldman Sachs is next. Goldman Sachs is definitely sideways to down. Uh, it's going to be interesting if we get below 105. Certainly, we'll probably retest to 103, but it does look like we're trying to break out of the, the last dip uh, from a week, week and a half ago, um, you know, notice that our volume profile is trying to put in some volume support in here at the 106, 105 price level. Um, but if we break 105, we're probably heading lower. And remember, financials can lead us lower. Netflix. Netflix is also showing some weakness. Um, let's take the moment here. And, and draw this out now just to see what's going on so we can get a, a gauge of what's going on and one thing we can see we can see where we broke up above that downtrend line 
failed at the 50 million average, split the market, and now we're coming back. So I would feel better if we get above this downtrend line. You know, that would make me feel better about Netflix. But overall, I'm I'm going to have to say sideways, probably sideways to down. We can see uh, that we do have a point of control and some volume support here at 211. So if we can stay above Friday's open, uh, I would feel good about it. But if we break, you know, this 205 price level, uh, it certainly looks like we're going to go lower. And finally, price line. Priceline certainly uh, consolidating here for a while. A lot of up and down, up and down. At least we're at the top of the up. Notice though that as we go back up, we're running into some volume resistance and the point of control. But I would say for this one is sideways. So we either have sideways and sideways and down. Our leaders are certainly not leading us higher. If it's more likely that they're leading us lower. Okay, as we look at some of our market sentiment leaders now, uh, gold, the dollar, and crude oil, we can see the dollar continues to kind of go sideways. However, this past week, we did see a couple inside bars and a move higher. So if we can get above 75, that would be certainly interesting. I mean, we could draw a downtrend line and say that the dollar is getting a little bullish here. Um, but there's certainly, uh, you can see our larger range up here at 76.50, the 200 million average. There's certainly a, a range that the market has been in. We're getting out of look at this. I mean, look at this month of the dollar. You know, so if we can start a trend higher, that's great. But remember, the dollar trending higher typically means a weaker stock market. Gold, on the other hand, continues to be on fire and has made its run back up here for 1900. Um, so it looks like we are going to retest. It makes sense for us to retest the. Um, the past swing high here, and from there, you know, you have to continue to watch out. Uh, uh, you know, this is a typical case of what is your risk? You're buying high. Is it going to go higher? It certainly should, or it certainly could, but you can't guarantee that. So this is certainly a high risk compared to buying off of a moving average like this. Finally, with crude oil, we can see that it's beginning to consolidate a little bit. After we fell off, got a little uh, uh, test here. Um, it hit the 50 million hours like the market. So the question is going to be, uh, we probably could go in, in here and test these wicks here. See what we got. See if we can stay above 85. Uh, if and then we could, you could make an argument for a ascending wedge here. Uh, if we can get above 90, then that will be bullish for uh, crude oil. Otherwise. We make uh, break 85, and that would be bearish. As we move to the education portion of our video, we've been talking about the ability to pull the trigger. And in the end, the inability, the fear of pulling the trigger really indicates a lack of confidence in your system or a lack of confidence in yourself. You know, we talked about a lot of things, but as again, as we end this conversation of pulling a trigger, it's either you got it or you don't. It's either you believe in the system or you don't. And I was talking with a, a, a person just this week. Um, you guys know we give our free trading plan consultation, so I was speaking with someone this week. I was speaking with a lady last week. And in the end, the best advice I can give you to build that confidence is documentation. We talk about this all the time. Back test it. When you document your system, You'll learn that the numbers don't lie. You'll learn whether or not your stop is in the right place. You'll learn whether or not your target is in the right place. And you'll learn that you should have a positive expectancy. And you'll learn to trust the system. Document, document, document. You know you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate? And our resources, as usual, our free five-part video course. It will help you frame your own high probability trading setups and give you a gauge into how we are as coaches. We already talked about we do offer a free one-hour uh, consultation on your trading plan. And then we have our coaching sessions, both individuals and a package, where we help with you one-on-one, -on -one, develop a personalized trading plan. We document it with you, and we give you that trader's mindset so you can enact that trading plan day after day. For those of you who are looking for a course, we've got a three-video course for you where we break it down from the introduction to the actual components of a trading plan and then we talk about the trading plan setups and it comes with a free coaching session to make sure that you understand what you've watched 
Of course, we have a great relationship for our futures traders. If you want to have that leverage, intraday margin as low as $300. And a great charting package for you looking at, so you can run your scans, find a moving stocks where it's both on PCs and Macs. But in the end, if you want that confidence, if you want to be able to pump yourself up, you got to document your system, you got to test your system, and you got to prove it out. And then you have to align it. And in proving it out, you'll learn whether or not that alignment matches with who you are as a trader and whether or not you have that trader's mindset to trade the system day after day after day. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.